welcome to today's webinar resident series, Expand Your Digital Knowledge with the ITERO Element. It is being presented by Kelly Bevington, RDA, EFDA, Director of iOS Technology. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the Adam Dreyfus, Corporate Account Manager, University, Government, and Institutions. Take it away, Adam. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much, Jessica. And thank you for that warm welcome, the Adam Dreyfus. That's an interesting one, but thank you so much. <laughs> um, first, um, I hope everyone is doing well. I would be remiss without saying thank you to every single one of you. Um, we at NDX appreciate your time and your support and your partnership. We really do uh, value that and some of the value that we see in that is providing courses like this for your education. Um, but enough of me chattering, but without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our esteemed speaker, Kelly Bevington. Kelly, please take it away. Thanks so much, Adam. I appreciate the kind words. Wonderful to be here. We're going to review specific um, ITERO scanning today. So I have a PowerPoint presentation. I also have an iTero scanner here that my intention is to do a demonstration of a single unit crown and show you some of the features and tools on the scanner itself. Um, please feel free to ask a question as it comes up. My experience is that if you have a question, there's probably somebody else um, in the audience that is also wondering the same thing. Kelly Bevington, I'm the director of iOS technology for NDX. So um, you know really who NDX is. Uh, Adam has done a wonderful job of creating awareness and building that partnership, and we uh, appreciate that tremendously. This is my team. I'm super proud of the training team that we have here at NDX. We are all clinical people. Uh, so myself, I was an RDA EFTA prior and working clinically for over a decade before joining NDX. We've got Brittany Carey out west. She's a registered dental hygienist. Brenda Kirkin, a CDA RDA, and was on uh, faculty at University of Detroit Mercy, specifically teaching iOS to D4 students. And then Ben Estrepo, who was a dentist in the Philippines. Um, you may see Ben and myself more than the others uh, due to geography as well. But uh, Ben comes to us from Nobel BioCare and then most recently, Three Shape where he was a TRIOS Academy trainer. And a, a little, little recap, um, you know, why do we go digitally? It's to save time and it's a better experience for the patient. We see improved um, accuracy and of course saving, um, you know, bottom line dollars once you be, become proficient in Infragum or, um, PVS is out of your expenditure. So it takes time to get there for some people, but um, this is ultimately our goal. And please know, like, don't feel bad if it doesn't click in your brain right away. For some people, um, scanning is like trying to drive uh, backwards in a rear view mirror, and it just takes time to get acclimated to the view on the screen. So for many of us, it takes a good 20 scans before you really get the knack of it. Um, and then others pick it up on day one. So know that that's normal. So what can we what can we do with the iTero scanner? What type of an impression uh, can we take for the ultimate uh, prosthetic device? And today you really can scan for anything. Um, you can scan for crowns and bridges and orthodontic appliances and implants, um, bike guards, surgical guides. We're doing sleep appliances now um, and moving into dentures and partials, whether you're scanning intraorally or perhaps as a reference scanning a impression that you've taken as a wash inside the patient's existing denture. So super exciting times. Um, just to sort of recap the importance of isolation and gingival tissue retraction. Lots of different ways to achieve it, um, but know that it's critically important with any scanner, not just iTero, but with any scanner. Also, um, all the scanners, including iTero, have uh, some aspect of a tool to help you assess 
the impression, the digital impression that you took after the fact, right? So it allows you to check for appropriate draw um, and it allows you, to, not iTero for the draw, but it allows you to check for the occlusal clearance reduction. Um, my personal take on that is, well, that's great, but, and it's nice that it has tools that you can go back and erase and rescan um, or delete and rescan, but ultimately it's the foundation of the crown, right? So double check that before you ever take a digital or a physical impression. Um, and you can do that, uh, having the patient bite wax and measure with calipers or the temporary and measure with calipers, or my personal favorite, is the device that's on the screen right now it's called prep check you have the patient tap where the preparation is and if it leaves a marking um, that is your indicator as to where it does not have adequate occlusal clearance um, so lots of different ways to do it but but try to come up with a process for yourself to double check that before taking the impression and then here we have an image, a beautiful, clear image of, of a prep that we can see um, the fully exposed margin. And ultimately, that's what we're looking for, right? If you can't see the prepared margin, the lab can't see the margin, and then you risk um, some aspect of failure, right? Uh, the marginal integrity. A uh, little bit about preparation when it comes to digital. You want to keep nice, rounded angles. You don't want anything sharp, um, especially when it comes to full contour zirconia. The light does not see in that 90 degree little angle corner, um, so we need it to be rounded. And then what are some different ways to achieve gin proper gingival tissue retraction so that we can see that exposed margin? Um, I'm a cord person. I, I might be old school, but I really like a double cord technique. And that is the gold standard within the iOS industry. Uh, so you're going to place an exactly measured uh, circumference cord, usually a double or triple zero first, uh, followed by maybe another uh, zero or a number one to get that uh, lateral retraction. So we want apical and lateral retraction of the tissue. Uh, once everything is really nice and dry, we're going to remove the top cord only, leaving the first cord in place at, in, in the sulcus. And it just helps to sort of, you know, hold off those ocular fluids from rising um, and allowing us to get a nice, dry, crisp scan. Are there different ways to achieve gingival tissue retraction and expose that margin? Yes, absolutely there is. Um, I would say the next best option is going to be some sort of a retraction paste. And please know that um, if you, you are delegating this part of the process off to your dental assistant, not everybody needs education on new materials that they use. And they're not always uh, provided an opportunity to, to read a user manual or instructions that came in the box. Um, so what's important with the retraction paste is that you're expressing it into the sulcus and then it expands, right? And it creates that lateral retraction. What a lot of people don't realize is, is just that. They think it's more of a hemostatic agent and they just lay it on top of the tissue and yes, it will stop the bleeding, but unless you express it into the sulcus, it's not going to create that lateral retraction and really expose the margin. Um, in combination with paste, I really like the compra cap. That's the image to the bottom right. And you're having the patient bite into it. What I don't like about paste is one, it can be really difficult to squeeze it out of the carpule. Um, and two, it can be difficult to vigorously rinse it to get all of the excess debris of the paste off of the prep without initiating hemorrhaging again. So it's it's a it's a fine line that uh, we we play there. So hence why I I prefer cord, but. No, there's different ways. Uh, rotary curatage is probably the, the third most popular thing that I see. Um, taking the burr, right, a little flame uh, carbide and going around the circumference of the prep. 
I find that although it works well to expose the margin, right, because you've just re removed the tissue, um, the debris of the tissue on the prep can be a challenge and keeping the area dry, right? So you want to still maintain um, an isolated dry field and control the hemorrhaging at that point. So um, Viscostat is a hemostatic agent that I really like that has a little sponge applicator and you can sort of burnish it right into the tissue. And, and I find that to work um, incredibly well with that technique. So we're talking about iTero today. The iTero scanner is from uh, Align Technologies. That's the manufacturer of the device. And it comes in several different shapes and sizes. Um, this is the, just an image of the, the most uh, current or uh, latest model. Uh, so the thing with iTero to remember is the scan path protocol is really pretty, it's very critical. Um, we always want to follow occlusal lingual buckle. There's never a, for instance, where we're not going to follow occlusal lingual buckle. Uh, when you're when when you're in a training day with me, you get tired of hearing me say occlusal lingual buckle and roll to the occlusal and roll to the lingual. Um, but that's what it is with iTero. There are other devices out there that you do not have to necessarily follow a very strict scan path protocol. Um, you may have had experience with that in your in your pre residency life. This is not one of them. You do, you really have to follow the occlusal lingual buckle. So the the most important scan that you're going to take is of the prep itself. So this is a, a an image of what you would see on the screen um, when you're lining up the the scanner to take the picture of the prep itself. You are holding the wand itself completely flat to the occlusal surface, like completely flat to the occlusal surface, and and you're touching. The adjacent teeth you're touching the prep again different than some of the other scanners the itero is developed and designed to touch the teeth not to hover um so so please keep that in mind the closer you can get to the prep itself the the better you are because the depth of field is not as deep with itero as it is with some of the hovering um, models out there so taking the image of the prep in eight to ten seconds that's it max and all we're taking an image of is the prep itself i i don't want you to focus on the interproximal contacts of the adjacent teeth i don't want you to focus on anything else except for that prep eight to ten seconds we're going to start on the occlusal roll to the lingual back over the occlusal to roll to the buckle finishing on the occlusal and at that point um, when you stop the scanner this green dot is going to pop up and you want to place the green dot dead center in the occlusal of the prep and take a look at that image and make sure that you can see the margin 360 degrees as well as confirm that you captured the mesial and distal walls of the prep itself, right? So it's all about the prep in that scan. This is an opportunity to review the prep. Um, it's important that you fully rotate lingually and buccally so that you can see the view that is on the screen right now, right? Um, oftentimes when you take the scanner, and and the the prep tooth itself um you can really capture the margin 360 degrees just by looking from the occlusal surface but you want to make sure that you're fully rotating buccally and that you're fully rotating lingually to make sure that you're capturing the entire circumference of the prep itself and oftentimes people miss that um, and especially if you do a uh, a bevel type of preparation, which I don't necessarily recommend for digital, but um, it, the lab needs that information, right? They need to see right below your finish line as well as from the occlusal view of your finish line. That will make a dramatic difference in the accuracy of um, the margins, right? So if you're consistently getting 
um, short margins, that could be a reason why. You really need to fully rotate lingually and buccally. And then our bite registration, right? So the, the bite registration is obviously very important. Um, you, I prefer to sit the patient up. Um, there is an option with something called pre-treatment scan. It's a slightly different workflow that allows you to take the image, the scan of the bite registration prior to preparation. Um, that's one of my favorites. If you are incorporating the delegation of scanning with your dental assistants, they can actually scan the maxillary arch, the mandibular arch, and the bite registration before patient is ever anesthetized, or maybe the patient is anesthetized, and uh, but but it's before preparation has occurred. We find that the patient's condyles are are you know most comfortable um setting them up um and and their their natural bite is more accurate when the patient has been uh, numb for 45 minutes hanging upside down on their head and you tell them you you put this wand in their mouth and tell them to bite normally they sort of look at you like are you kidding me like i don't even know what normal is right now so keep that in mind uh, when it's time to take your bite registration i'm going to mention one more thing with the bite registration is try to take it more at the bicuspid area so the first or second premolars um, versus going the whole way to the second molar I don't know why, but oftentimes clinicians want to want to go to the terminal molar, whatever that might be, and take this the bite registration scan there. It's not necessary, and if anything, it prob it, be it becomes more problematic because it hits on the bone, it hits on that ramus bone. The patient like flinches a little bit. You don't really notice it, but it they when they flinch, their bite opens, and now your bite registration is not accurate. The itero scanner, I just put this image in because I do want you to know, uh, oftentimes people will say, well, does the scanner talk to me? Does it tell me if I need an additional scan or something was wrong? Yes and no, it does not talk to you. It used to actually, the original iteros used to sort of scream at you with this automated voice, you know, a close all number 30. Um, so fortunately they got rid of that because I, I felt like I was being reprimanded every time I went to scan for, for uh, any faculty members that might be here that remember that, but um, it will give you highlights. It will give you a pop-up image or a box. Now you can ignore that box, um, and but it's there for a reason. So read it and pay attention as to why that box popped up. In this particular example, it's because the prep where it's highlighted in red was missed. So that prep was not scanned and that's why this image came up. <clears throat> now I'm sure that the clinician probably looked at it and said, well, wait a minute, I, I'm looking at the screen. I see that I captured that tooth, it, it's wrong. It's rare that the computer software is wrong when asking you for a scan, like really go back with your arrows um, to the left or to the right and make sure that those individual segment scans have been acquired. Um, I know you might see it collectively at the end, but that doesn't mean that you scan the prep where it needed to be scanned to create the digital dive for the dental lab. So just a, a review of what do we need? We always need the opposing arch. We always need the prep segment as well as the prep arch. So the prep segment and prep arch are two different things. The prep segment is of the prep itself only, right? It's at eight to 10 seconds, occlusal lingual buckle, period, you're done. Um, and then you scan the entire prepped arch um, and then uh, the bite registration. So uh, opposing operative or prep segment, uh, prep arch, and bite registration, and of course the RX. So the, this is one of the analyzing tools. Uh, the gold identifies where the prep uh, segment is and that digital die, it's called the prep separation guide. 
Uh, typically on a single unit, uh, especially posterior tooth, it does not become an issue or concern. Where we see concerns at times is multiple units in the anterior where that digital dye sort of overlaps uh, each tooth. And so that's where it's important for you as the clinician to go in and assess this. And we can change the positioning of that yellow, of that digital dye around each individual prep as well. Another analyzing tool at the end is going to be for occlusal reduction. I mentioned that a little earlier in that it's great to have the tool and it's um, it, it to identify that uh, potential error, right? And it's great to have the tool to erase it um, and rescan it. But at the end of the day, I would prefer you to double check that before you ever start to scan. Because even though we can rescan it, there is something called stitching with any kind of digital scan. And on occasion, um, the stitching of the new data over the old data is just a hair off. I mean, just a, a micron. But in dentistry, that makes a difference. Um, so I, I try to avoid going through this process when at all possible. Um, but the image to the left is where you can erase it. Once you've erased it, it looks like a blue hole. Um, so blue in the iTero world is a hole or missing data, um, at which time then you can rescan that hole, that occlusal surface, which is what it looks like here on the screen. Now you're going to reposition your green dot here, and then you can reanalyze that you uh, and confirm that you have adequate occlusal reduction. Um, a couple other uh, tools on a scanner that I very, very much like is the fill tool and the delete tool. So when you press and hold on the screen, and that's the keyword hold, when you press and hold on the screen, a little menu pops up and the menu will say um, segment, uh, segment uh, with a trash can is to delete that particular segment or the fill tool allows you to go in just over that hole that missing data that you have and it fills in the hole only which is wonderful really really wonderful tool um, it prevents over scanning and uh, providing too many layers of data to the laboratory and uh, so here's an example of the fill tool and what happens when you are filling it, right? So the red here is as the data is being filled in and the blue over here is what that hole looked like originally. A little bit about um, implants. You know, I'm, I want to do the demonstration first of a single unit crown, um, and then we'll, we'll identify time um, as far as moving forward with implants. Is that okay with you, Adam? That sounds great. Sorry, Kelly. No worries. So I'm going to stop my share for a moment so I can <clears throat> share my iTero scanner. Absolutely. Um, and, and I'll just pop in here real quick while, while you're doing that, uh, to our participants, as you can see, um, Kelly is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to digital, um, but she's knowledgeable on multiple facets, but without that, I will be quiet now because she's ready to go and we will continue <laughs> this conversation in a few minutes. Thanks, Kelly. Sure. I'm going to stop my video while I'm actually scanning because I, I make like crazy faces when I scan. <clears throat> and I'm not right next to uh, the computer itself. So for um, a new scan, I'm going to fill out the RX. So we always have to have a first name and a last name. <clears throat> we always have to have a case type. 
I would say the majority of anything you're going to do is going to be restorative. And then my crown prep happens to be on number 30. It's going to ask us for some basic information. Okay. So I, I'm not doing pretreatment on this image. I'm just doing a single unit crown, <clears throat> traditional workflow of three individual scans, which is going to be the prep scan, the prep arch scan, uh, posing, and bite registration. So with that, um, I'm lining up my green crosshairs right over the occlusal of number 30. I'm turning the scanner on. I'm doing two seconds on the occlusal. I'm rotating lingually so that I've got another two seconds on the lingual. And I'm rotating the whole way around to the buckle. So I've got two seconds on the buckle and back to the occlusal. I'm taking a look from the occlusal and I'm turning it off. I want to make sure that I can see the walls of the prep so I can magnify or shrink. I can turn the image from all different angles, which I encourage you to do. You can see that the um, interproximal contact walls have not been captured at this time. And that's on purpose. We don't want to capture them at this time. If you accidentally capture something, that's fine, but you don't want to purposely capture it. So at this point, I'm gonna tap and hold on the screen at which time I can move my green dot, right? So I want it dead center in the middle of the occlusal. And then I am going to tap my arrow to move forward to the um, prep seg or I'm, I'm sorry, the prep arch segment. And I'm going to do a quadrant here. So I'm on the occlusal of 31. I'm doing all my occlusals. I'm going to cross the midline. I'm tipping in lingually. I'm capturing all of the lingual. I'm rotating around to the buckle, capturing all of the buckle surfaces. And when I'm capturing the buckle surfaces, I wanna make sure that I'm capturing a good two to four millimeters of gingival tissue because that's gonna be critically important when I do my bite. And then I'm finishing by wrapping up to the incisal edges at the midline. Um, it's important to do that so that uh, the lingual and buckle data is stitched together um, occlusally or incisally. So this is my full lower scan at this point. You can see that I've got missing data on the inner proximal contact walls. I did that on purpose because I want to show you the fill tool. So the fill tool then, and so here's our, here's our hole, the blue, right? I am tapping and holding on the screen itself. And I'm clicking on fill tool. The, the hourglass spinning does, um, it, it, the speed of that is somewhat dependent on your internet connectivity as well as the size of your scan. So even though this is a small scan, the internet connectivity is a little wonky only because I'm doing team viewer through the scanner. So you can see the hole is encircled in red. And now I can go back in at any angle. And when I start scanning, you'll see that that red now turns tooth colored. Right, the blue that was inside of the red, I should say, now turns tooth colored. So that's that's my that's my favorite 
is the fuel tool. I think it's the most fabulous thing in the world. Um, to continue forward, we're now going to do the opposing, and the opposing is the same thing, right? So if you if you started, you always want to start on the occlusal of whatever that most terminal molar is. So I'm going to do all the occlusals. All of the linguals or palatals. Typically, when I get right about here, I'm going to ask the patient to relax their jaw. I might have them shift it to the left if need be so that I can get up into that buccal corridor without causing them discomfort. Capturing that two to four millimeters of soft tissue. And finishing back up on that incisal edge. So we take a look at this. We've got all the occlusal data. Now someone might say, oh, but you have a, a blue hole here. Oh, we missed that. We need to get that. Yeah. Do we? Do we really? Like if you, if that would be a prerequisite now with a polyvinyl impression, um, I would say yes, but there is nothing about that um, interproximal little, little mesial wall there that will be impactful to the fabrication of the crown on number 30. So, so know that. Don't be too critical on yourself. I know as um, dental professionals, we are perfectionists, um, but, but, you know, judge really when it makes a difference uh, in the digital world as well. And then from here, we're going to continue to move forward for our bite registration. Notice the images that are popping up on the screen. These are little helpful guidance hints. And Every scanner has these guidance hints on them. Every training I do, I go in and usually they're turned off and I turn them back on because we always have new assistants, we have new residents, we have new faculty coming into the practices and it's a disservice to those new people who are trying to learn the technology to take this away. So yes, you've done a million scans and you don't need this anymore. You can click that little box that says don't show again, but please don't do that. You know, leave, leave that um, education little tip uh, for the next user. So at this point, I'm having the patient um, open their mouth, right? I'm inserting the wand into the oral cavity and I'm retracting the cheek. I'm now going to have the patient close I'm looking to confirm that the patient is, you know, uh, that that's their accurate bite. And I'm turning the device on at this point. So once I turn it on, I'm going up to the maxilla, capturing two to four millimeters of gingival tissue down to the mandible, doing the same thing, pulling the wand out and turning it up. And you'll see the blue or purple color, right, is our bite registration. So I talked through that and it was still a pretty short amount of time. This is exactly the, the way in which you want to do the bite registration. But let's say we needed to do redo it. You know, the teeth were not in proper occlusion. You can press and hold and delete that segment. It's gonna ask you, are you sure you want to remove the bite? And we're gonna say yes and it allows us to start it again. So I'm gonna come in this time, close again, right? And just do it one more time. It can be done on the prep or not on the prep. It's totally up to you, starting where the teeth interdigitate, up to the maxilla, down to the mandible, pulling the wand out and turning it off. Now give it about five seconds and I wanted to turn it off before it turned purple on the screen because many of us are impatient human beings, myself included. And so when I first started scanning and I would see that little purple image that was at the bottom center of the screen, I was, I was upset. I thought, oh no, I missed the bite. I didn't get it. And I would delete it and do it again. What I didn't realize was that sometimes the, the computer's processing the data and it needs a few seconds to actually process it together. Um, so, so give yourself a little grace. 
little patience and allow that to merge together. Um, I would I would guesstimate that maybe 10% of all the bites you take will not register. Uh, now that's not to say that what registers is accurate. Th this is you then, you need to go in and confirm that what you see is correct, right? So I usually like to take it to the lingual that like I've showing you here and make sure that those cusp tips are appropriately interdigitated. And then at this point, we can post-process. This might take a moment because of the team viewer and the Zoom call, um, but I do want to show you, oh good, the occlusal clearance reduction guide opportunity, right? So the occlu occlusal clearance guide identifies the red based off of the material that you selected on the prescription. So I selected full contour zirconia and it is showing, right, that I have an adequate amount of occlusal reduction. But let me change the scale. Don't kind of let me go higher. It'll let you go lower. So I'm at the highest um, amount of reduction, but let's say you were you were here, you were at the 1.1 to 2.30, and you saw red on the occlusal. What I would encourage you to do is first double check that your bite is accurate. Okay. Secondarily, you can change it 2.55 to 1.45. Seems like the numbers are a little off to me, but um, full contour zirconia, the laboratory needs a minimum of one millimeter, right? So if we switched it to 0.5 to 1.55, you would see that there's less um, measurement of that occlusal reduction. So the, those are my first two tips is double check your bite. And then based on your material that you selected in the rx see if there's an opportunity to change that occlusal clearance guide so from here i would like to show you looking at your image in monochrome right so this is the monochromatic this is really important um you can look at your prep image in the stone model mode or monochromatic right from the beginning um when you very first scanned your prep and and that's encouraged as well but the reason we want you to look at the stone model mode is it's slightly uh, it's a it's not different data but it's a slightly different view that we interpret ourselves right so as, as dental clinicians we are accustomed to seeing gingival tissue enamel and dentin and so we we're that's like common to us. We're used to seeing that. Um, so sometimes when we look at it in color, we don't see flaws as easily, right? So we can see the color, and then when you turn it to stone model mode, you want to be able to see the clarity, the crispness of your margin right? You want to be able to see the definition between the gingival tissue and the prepped dentin itself. And, and I hope that makes sense to people. I know when you see it in, in real life, it certainly does. Um, you also have the capability to scan in the stone model mode. Um, that's not my personal preference, but I work with, with many doctors that just prefer to scan in the stone model and then they don't have to go back and forth between color and stone um i i find going back and forth is is just fine so i'm going to go back to color and then i want to review the prep right so this is identifying the prep separation and where it is pink you can see that is where the um the digital preparation has occurred back. 
Now, if it's the gold we're looking at, right? So let's say we wanted to change that digital die. Um, let's say that when we saw it originally, let me get rid of one. Let's say it looked like that when we went to look at it, right? So you can see that the distal margin is missing on that digital die, right? So the, the gray silver is representing the die at that point. So we can go back and add to it. And we can erase, right? So I got a little heavy handed there. I go right in between and be able to erase that. So if you can imagine you're working on a large anterior case, those individual smaller anterior preps, especially the lower anterior, it's, um, it's important to go through this process. And uh, more often than not, when you are doing your, um, your posterior teeth, the as long as you have that green dot on the occlusal surface of the prep um this part of it um identifies like very very easily uh, just as we saw when i initially opened it up um there is also in the bottom left hand corner you can see a picture of a prep with uh like a blue pen and that is an opportunity to mark your own margin if you're so inclined. I do not necessarily recommend doing that um, unless it, you know, as residents, I, I don't, I just don't recommend doing that. Um, for older dentists, more mature dentists that perhaps were like old CERAC users and you had to mark the margins and they're very accustomed to marking the margins, then yes, you could do that if you want. Um, so this automatically marks the margin and you can move it if you want, right? You can see me moving it dramatically. Um, but if there's something about this margin that you don't like, you want to make sure that you hit the red X, otherwise that is saved. So it's not an area that you want to go in and sort of play around with the information because you could potentially make an error um that you that you don't want to do right or you could um mark your own margin Let's do this. In the upper right hand corner is a camera. I'm going to switch it to color again. Okay, so here's the color. There is a camera up here to the right. Um, this provides a screenshot of what we just saw, um, at which point you could draw something. You could create a text box. You could type a message. Oh. Spell. <laughs> there we go. Um, and save it. So at this point, this image could go to the lab and there is an expected software update um, in q1 of 2023 that will allow this image to tag along with your case from the itero scanner when you send it right now today currently this image if you kept annotations so i'll keep the annotations will now go to my itero.com account so that uh, there was a pop-up in the bottom left hand side of the screen that indicated that 
Um, so it's a little convoluted, right? You would have to go to your myitero.com account, pull it up, and then email that picture, that screenshot to the lab. Um, so for something like, you know, uh, a note about a margin, um, I would not use that yet because it's not going to tag along with the case. However, where we do find it being used pretty frequently is with uh, RPD designs, so removable partial dentures. Um, let's say you have an intraoral scan of the maxillary arch and um, you know six, six teeth are missing, and you can draw on the image uh what where you want the design where you want the class if you want um an open palette or an apron or what whatever type of design you want on the for the patient's partial so i think that part of it is really cool um at this point we would then hit the envelope and send the case I'm not going to I'm not going to do that, but I am going to stop my share and turn my screen back on. Oh, hi. I'm a little hesitant to get into implants or anything further in, in you know, for the last 10 minutes. Um, and and but we can do an additional course specific to implants, partials and dentures. I think that would be great. Um, but please, um, you know, th this is an opportunity for discussion. I'm going to presume most of you have worked with the iTero on some level. Um, so please feel free to make an inquiry um, and open it up for a discussion. Kelly, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Um, My pleasure. So much information shared. And I can definitely tell you, um, I'm an expert already after just 50 <laughs> minutes. No, seriously, um, no, no, no joking aside, the amount of knowledge you have is quite incredible. And I hope the participants um, view that and um, to the participants and residents and resident leaders and directors, a Kelly is a resource that we have available to us that not many people can in in the industry can say that we that they have. Um, and this is an advantage that we do bring to the table. Um, Kelly and her team, as she ex she explained their backgrounds, is extremely knowledgeable um, and willing to come into facilities, sit down, talk, do hands-on presentations, do virtual presentations, and so much more. And, and I'm excited to be able to bring that to you. Um, we at NDX are just so excited to be able to provide a full service. Um, and it's not just about the restoration, it's everything included um, and the partnership that we have formed. But just remember our number one focus is that patient in the chair ultimately. Absolutely. Um, but please reach out to us, ask us questions. I understand that this forum at times, people don't feel comfortable asking questions. There's nothing wrong about emailing Kelly, emailing me, reaching out to Jessica, going to our website, which you all get when I send you emails. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, but without further ado, thank you, everybody. Thank you.